Still waters can be very tough, but with the right techniques, they can be very rewarding. Well, today we're back at a lake that we did a show at a few years ago. It was called Fishing with Friends, and it's one of the many great lakes that there are in the Golden area. We had a lot of chronomid action a few years ago, and we got our box of chronomids here. We got our damselflies, we got our shrimp patterns, we got our dragonflies, we got oh, a whole assortment of things. We got our two rods ready to go. Well, all we can do is get out in the lake and see what's awaiting us here at Golden Lakes. And that's today as we take you sport fishing on the fly. This is a decent fish. What we found is we got out here and we were working the shoals. A lot of fish moving on the shoals, some of the spawners, but a lot of silver fish. So we moved just to the ledge again. So that means just off the shoal where it drops off into deeper water. So this shoal is probably 10 to 12 feet, drops off to about 15 to 16 feet. And this is an ideal place mainly because the fish are always cruising along this ledge and the right, we're noticed they're, they're right on the bottom. This is the odd one rising but all the big guys are right on the bottom. So we're having to go down deep, fishing nice and slow, just bringing that, this, this fly right up the ledge. And here he is here, he's actually a little colored, but look at the size of him. Oh, and he, look at that. Now that's what you call a long line release. Barbell sucks, of course, you're gonna get those kind of releases. I hope everybody got to see the fish, but again, I just wanna stress the fact of getting down deep right now. It's, uh, they're, they're moving along the ledge, but all the fish are right on the bottom. Oh, getting, whoa, this guy just pounded it too, trying to get into my, there we go. Oh, still got a little bit of life left in him. So again, just working the ledge. Got the dragonfly imitations just on. And all we're doing is casting out into probably 20, 20 to 25 feet of water. Letting our fly line sink right down and just working the fly back right up the ledge. And the fish are just sitting there, just cruising along that 15 foot depth right on the ledge and feeding. And the big thing we noticed when we came out is all the fish were right on the bottom. And it's something to remember, you see, you'll see the odd fish boiling out here, but there's no chronomids hatching, there's the odd mayfly, there's nothing really around. And they were shrimping right on the bottom, so you got two choices. You go shrimping in the shallows, or you go and work something a little deeper off the ledge where all the fish are cruising right now. So we've elected for the second route, going a little deeper, working the ledge, and we're having a little bit of luck. It's actually, you know, you take a cast, you might not get a hit. Next cast, you're gonna get a hit or a fish, so it's, it's pretty steady, it's quite good. Let's see if we can get this guy in and show everybody. Real nice, healthy fish in here. Oh, what a great lake. And the big key here is get to the bottom. You know, whatever it takes. I've got an intermediate sink and I'm allowing it to sink down. If really, if I, had, if I was smart, which I'm not, I would go with a full sink line. I think that's what Grant's done, is maybe going with a full sink, or he's thinking about changing to a full sink and going right to the bottom. And if you do that, you don't have to wait as long for the fly line to get down, but I'm also getting, covering a real good zone with this intermediate sink. It's just staying off the bottom, you know, a foot or two, and it's just perfect. So, get this guy up here. That's why you should always use your net if you have one. Because then you don't break your rod or your line. There we go. Okay, barbell sock just slides out like nothing. And here he is. Nice little rainbow. If everybody's seen, look at the backs on these guys, man. These are these are healthy fish. There he is there. Not a beautiful fish. Just real nice and chrome silver. Just beautiful. Get him back. And get him ready to go. Okay. And there he goes. And you know what I just saw come out of his mouth? Right there is an adult damsel fly. Sitting there, right on the water, you can't see it on film, but that adult damsel is just sitting there and just squirted out of his mouth. So what does that tell me? I'm using a dragonfly imitation. Could also go with the adult damsels. We're tuned in. I think we're gonna have a real good day. Oh, 
always a little trick here to get back on the reel. I want to show everybody this little trick. Use one finger. I use my middle finger to hold the line that's actually putting the tension on the rod, on the fish. And then I use my last finger, the very last one, to loop around and bring the line up. That way you can spool it up nice and you get caught up on your reel. A little trick that people should really take advantage of. So this guy's a nice small one, but what we're going to do is this guy is big enough for a throat sample. And we haven't really done a throat sample yet today. So what we're going to do is take a small throat sample and see, see what he's being feeding on. Make sure it's all your hands are wet. Turn the fish upside down. Again, make sure all the water's out of the pump. Depress it, slowly go in just till you feel the tightening right there. And throat sample. And then let go of the fish. And there he goes. Doesn't harm at all. So let's go and have a quick look and see what we have in the throat sample. A small little chronomid, probably about a size 24. So you won't see me casting that out. <laughs> and about size 30 shrimp. Very, very tiny. So really not keying on anything right now. And we've seen quite a few damsels moving. So maybe a little later on, we'll start picking up on some damsels. But right now they're short striking. So probably a good time to go for a break and have a little lunch. You know what they say? The old saying when fishing slow, eat. So we just did that. Went in and had some lunch, got some confidence back. Decided to come back out and uh, we see lots of damsel flies around today. So put on a damsel and it just seems like right now there's lots of little fish about. And this is a little guy compared to the, the size of some of the guys you can get in here. So put on a, a nice little damsel pack. So we just got upside down and put that pop out. Nope. When you tuck it, deep note, it's on the edge there. There you go. Fly out. Little guy. <laughs> oh, off he goes. But that's a good way to start things out after lunch. Hopefully some of the big guys are going to come on because there's definitely lots of those damsels around. Well, I'll we'll get this guy in here. He's just a small one, so we, we just cut real quick right to the chase. But now we're going to show you what we've been using all day. If you can see in his mouth, I'll slide him over to the camera a little bit. You can see the fish and you can see that funny looking little fly in the fish's mouth there. I don't know if you can see it, but he's right there and he's... Now what we call this here, let me just undo this guy. Whoa, he's right in the lip. Just, uh, unhook him, give him a little, little toss. And there he goes. And here it is. The pattern of the day. And now this is a pattern that the English, Scottish, all the uh, Europeans use it over there. Dale brought it back from the world and Paul Mariner knows quite a bit about it. It's called the English booby. Now how I've tied it is actually to imitate a dragon damsel type pattern. It's got the marabou in the back, the green body, and of course the key ingredient, the booby eyes. So it's actually called the booby and we're going to tie it up on the bench. So let's go to the bench, tie up the booby. The English are known to be some of the best lake fishermen in the world. And when my brother came back from the World Fly Fishing Championships, he brought us back an English booby. This fly turns out to be a great dragon and damsel imitation. Make sure you have these materials ready before you tie the fly. We'll use a Mustad R72 size 8 to tie with. We'll use some 8 dot olive thread, some round foam balls for the eyes, some bait maker mesh for the eye holders, some dubbed olive marabou as the body, for the rib, we'll use some medium copper wire and some olive marabou for the tail. The first step to the fly is to take some olive marabou, make it the length of the hook, and then take it back and tie it in for the tail. Now that the tail's tied in, I'm going to take some medium copper wire and we'll tie it at the back, and this will be used for the ribbing a little later. The ribbing's now tied in. I'm going to take a green marabou feather and what I'm going to do is dub in a body. Now what I'm going to do is pick off the marabou off the feather and wrap it in and dub it onto my thread. And again, keep it fairly thin. The bodies of most damsels are fairly thin. And we'll make it a little thicker towards the head end. I just keep dubbing it on your thread. 
And once your body's dubbed on, we're going to wrap it forward to form a body. And make sure you only dub the body up and leave quite a bit of room for your eyes. Probably about uh, half an inch. Now we're going to take our medium copper wire and make about four to five turns up just to rib the body. I've now finished tying in the ribbing. And what I'm going to do is take a couple of foam eyes, foam round eyeballs, and I'm going to put it in my mesh material. And all you want to do is make sure you, you wrap it good in the mesh, make sure the eyes are totally covered in the mesh, and tie it on right near your eyelid. Tie on the mesh material, cut the mesh material off, and now wrap in between. Do figure eights to separate the eyes into two, two nice big bulging eyes. The last step in the fly now is to take some more green marabou and dub in a nice thick amount on your line. And we're going to wrap in between the eyeballs just to form a nice head on the fly. And again, keep it fairly thick. We want this to be nice and full around the eyes. To finish the fly off, I'm going to take my whip finisher and whip finish the thread right around the eyelet. Cut off your thread and then what I'm going to do is actually take a dubbing picker and just pick out a bit of the dubbing in the body and right near the eyes just to give it that lifelike look. And there you have it, the finished English booby. You know the one thing that sets this fly apart from other flies are the eyes. They not only give the fly lifelike movement, but they also act as an attractor. So we're just making our way to a different part of the lake. The wind's changed directions. We've been fishing up there and ah, we did well earlier. And now we want to see what it's like at the other end of the lake. Again, I mentioned there's been lots of damsels around, so trolled with the damsel fly. What I was doing was making sure I gave a little motion. I've actually been trolling for probably 10 minutes now, trolling. <laughs> and uh, what I was doing was actually just shaking the end of my rod tip, just trying to give a little bit of action with a marabou body. It undulates real nicely like a damsel fly does, and this guy picked it up. Not huge, but again, put the bend in the rod. I'm using a nine foot, six weight rod because there are some very big fish in here. And uh, we've been using some bigger flies. Look how fat this guy is. Boy, he'll give you a great fight. I think I got some muscle to him. Get the net ready. Now we just gotta get the fish ready. See if he'll just pop right up here. Here goes, oh man, how fat they are. Not the longest fish, but uh, wow, fat. Dams are right in the corner of his mouth. Pop that out. Well, I don't know how long this net is, but I got my 16-inch measure. So that's about a 17-inch fish. Look at the look at the shoulders on him. Look how fat he is, right up there, right by my thumb. Unbelievable. Set him back down here. Get him ready to go. Wait for him. I see a few chronomids coming off too. Hopefully, we're going to get the nice chronomid hatch a little bit later on. And there he goes. Oh boy, I'm going to have to move all my line up here because it is a mess. So, this guy will be brought in not on the reel. But oh, wow, you know what? We've gone from, ooh, we've gone from the deep water, like we showed you earlier in the show. And now we've gone into the shallows and the fish are moving right up on these weed beds in no more than three feet of water. It's just phenomenal. You see them come right out of the weed bed. You cast the booby over the weed bed, let it sink a bit with clear intermediate, bring it back nice and quick, real quick hand retrieves that I'm gonna show you in a minute. And you just hang on. It is unreal. And they just stop it. It's just boop. Incredible. Oh. You know, I've got a six weight rod and I know Grant does too. And like he said, there's some very large fish in here, you know, over the eight to 10 pound mark that you have the potential to catch. So you do have to, you do have to use a, quite a stiff rod in here. Five, six weights, probably advisable. So recommend it set up probably for today. You want a type six line, it's really good. Also the clear intermediate sinks. You want to be able to get down the bottom and right now, 
we're in shallower water, but it's still, again, we're still letting it sink down. So probably the best clear intermediate sink or a full sink line. Six weight rod and about six to, six to eight feet a liter. These, uh, these fish are a little shy in the, in the shallow water and you want some longer leader. And there he goes. So we got the old chronomet out and my booby and he trashed my booby. The one thing bad about the boobies is they have the foam eyes. And if a fish really attacks it like that one there, they usually rip an eye off and it's no good. So I'll go back to my supply and put another one on. I'm gonna go back to that weed bed and work it. But remember, get the clear intermediate sink line it's a killer for the boobies. So what I'm doing now with the booby, this is the retrieve you want to use. Cast your line out as far as you can get it out. Allow that intermediate sink line to sink for probably 20 to 25 seconds. That's my count. Just allow it to get down a little bit. And it's probably going to sink down about a foot to two feet. Again, we're fishing three to four feet of water over the weeds. And now what I'm going to do is real quick handless retrieve. So I'm using all four fingers and I'm really quick hand twist retrieve and let it sit for a second. Again, real quick hand twist retrieves in a second. What that fly is going to do is skitter and bounce and really hop in the water and you really want to really want to pop it because those eyes float and every time you stop it'll give that kind of motion. Really like a danzel. Again, real fast hand twist retrieve. And hang on because when the fish hit they just smoke it. Don't know how big he is. All I know is that I picked him off of that point back over there and he kept coming after me. Smart fish. He kept chasing me. Right on. Well, let's get this guy in here. Yeah, there we go. Good fish. There you go. They're just so uh, so fat and healthy here. Fly right on the corner of the lip. Just pop it out, clear it. This guy's gonna be ready to go just about right away, I think. Oh, the snub nose. <laughs> he got a snub nose. <laughs> and off he goes. <laughs> That's one of the funniest looking fish I think I've ever seen. Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> oh wow. <well. laughs> oh wow. Whew, composure. <laughs> nice fish. <laughs> Uh, anyway, back to fishing after that. <laughs> Maybe I'll try one of the boobies now. Oh, wow. Well. <laughs> enjoyed today's show. We had a chance to show you a few different techniques and different ways to catch fish and it just kind of progressed throughout the day. It did and I think a real important thing is to have that wet line technique in your arsenal. You know we tend to chronomate fish a lot when we're in the lake right? but it really pays to get down off the shoal sometimes and get deep. Well you know it's interesting to use the Aqualux line and they say it's a clear intermediate slow sink line but we think it's a lot faster. You know they say it's like maybe a type 2 or so but we're thinking it's more like a type 4 type 5 so you were actually getting down a lot faster. Yeah and with the heavier weight I have the six weight real uh, Aqualux which is more like a type 3 or type 4 it does get down yeah. fairly quick and you had the four weight which wasn't then getting down there <laughs> the four weight line right yeah which you had to get to the type 6 sink <laughs> right which worked good too but you had to be on the bottom that was a big key that was the key to the whole day of fishing yeah. getting the fly right down the bottom because that's where the fish were
Got to be in front of the fish and you're not going to catch them. So it pays to be observant. Yeah, I think for that's sure. what the bottom line is. Yeah. Whenever you go anywhere, it pays to be observant. And you know, we're fortunate, we do have a lot of tools in our arsenal oh. that we get to, to pull out and oh, use. Yeah. But we get to show you, so you get to build it up as well. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> when you get a chance to come out, though, make sure you take care. Yeah, Conserva Waters done a great job up in this area here in the Golden. It's beautiful. It's awesome. See you next time. When we take you sport fishing on the fly. Sport fishing on the fly is brought to you by G. Loomis Quality Graphite Fly Rods. You'll like what you feel. And by Islander Reels. High performance, precision fly reels, Canadian made. And by Outcast, makers of the best pontoon boats. And by Hyde, made by fishermen for fishermen. And by these other fine sponsors.